Is the 5 inch screen from Long Runner for a Raspberry Pi totally useless or is it worth something? Let's find out. And a special thank you to all my patrons who without your support this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, please think about becoming a patron and supporting the channel you love. So let's open up this puppy and see what's inside. So we have the five inch LCD display from Long Runner and let's open it up. Got some packaging. We have our five inch screen, our HDMI adapter. Then we have a bunch of screws and nuts and this is our stylus for our thing here. And so if we look inside, these are some different sort of cut acrylic plates and I have to admit I've already opened this so I already peeled off the paper that was on there so let's put this together so now if you look at the directions they're pretty much useless and you have to go to the website but the website doesn't show anything so luckily the Amazon picture has a uh, or Amazon seller has a some brief directions on how to put it together so if you're wanting to get this, I'll leave a link below. It was $44 and I got an extra 10% off. Uh, if you look at the picture, so the first one has a Raspberry Pi, you can see over here running uh, Windows 10, which I'm gonna guess isn't really the truth. And it has a Raspberry Pi dashboard. We go through and down here, actually, it has some directions and so they're pretty basic so I'll just run you through and how we got it put together so of course you need a Raspberry Pi and then uh, first thing you need to do is get these two sheets and so one is slightly thicker than the other and the directions on Amazon don't say that one is different than the other but I'm gonna guess the thick one goes on the front thin one goes on the back and that sort of holds this in place, but not really. It just actually makes it a little thicker. Uh, next, we need to screw on the feet uh, to the back of this plate. And I'm really good at losing screws, so maybe I have a screw loose. But we'll just dump these out, see if we can keep them all on the table. Again, the directions don't tell you what to do, where anything goes, so I'll just give you the basics of what I've figured out so far. So basically, we have two size screws, so long ones and short ones. So the long ones go in these four holes here, and then the short ones go every place else. And so the first thing we have to do is put on the feet. And how the feet go on is you have to put the bolt through the back so the nut is on the front there there is a spacer that goes on the back of here and so it won't fit with the bolt there or with the nut there excuse me next we have to put it on the other side okay step one done now we need to put the longer screws through with the spacers Now we're gonna put this on the back here. So if we take a close look here, you see here's our screw and then there's a hole here and that's because there's a hole underneath, but the s holes drilled into this board do not match where the screw screws are underneath. And so what we're gonna have to do, I'm just gonna take a knife and whittle that out a little bit so the holes are bigger. So next we want to put on four bolts. Make sure the posts fit. And the this moves up and down with there. And then start attaching the nuts. Once the nuts are attached, then uh, take off our tape. And then you can tighten those. So now we have a screen that <coughs> is standing by itself. 
So now we're going to attach uh, some plates to the Raspberry Pi, this one actually. And then uh, we want to add in the little spacer. Set the pie on top, and then uh, attach, whoa, attach the nuts, which you can't see me doing. Good, so those are nice and tight. So next we need to attach this to the, the Raspberry Pi to the back of the panel. And so we have to align the end of the pins with the end of the black box there. And gently push that down. And so now our, that's not very even, is it? Okay, so you got me. So basically we've reached this point where something should attach to these posts, but there's actually if I look at the directions here, I'll show you. There's no place for the post to attach. Nothing that posts attach to, and it actually interferes with this. So I'm gonna pull this off and actually take out the posts. Uh, so I don't know what they're there for. Uh, we don't seem to need them, so. So if anybody can figure out what these little posts are that obviously fit right here are for, leave a comment down below, just in case I want to use them. Okay, so going back to aligning these and press that down. And then the final piece here is we take, we take this uh, HDMI adapter and then put it right in the top right there. And that locks right in place nice and solid. So let's see if this thing actually does anything. So the next step is we need to install Raspbian to a SD card. So where you can find that is just Google Raspbian and then uh, download Raspbian Buster Desktop, whichever one you want, or Buster Lite if you're gonna make this a server. So once you've done that, you wanna open up Bella Anna Etcher and then you want to burn that to your favorite SD card. And then go to the lcdwiki.com slash 5-inch HDMI display page. And so we're going to use the directions here to actually enable the touchscreen display on our screen. Okay, so let's get started. So we have a keyboard and a mouse hooked up, and we have our little tablet here. So let's bring that a little closer. Okay, so I'm going to plug this in. And if you look, there are actually two ports here. So one for the screen, one for the Raspberry Pi. When you have a Raspberry Pi, then you just need the one port. This one is for if you have it hooked up to a, uh, just a regular one. With the Raspberry Pi, the power is transferred over. We're gonna plug that in. Let's see what happens. There, it's starting up. Okay, so it looks like it looks like it's in a boot loop, and I'm going to guess that's because the power supply that we're using is not strong enough. So if you have this problem, look to your power supply first. Uh, why that is is because the Raspberry Pi is also powering the screen in the setup. So I'm going to unplug this. So I have one of these multi-unit chargers, so we're going to stick our cord in there. Okay, and so now it's powering up fine. So yeah, if you're having a going into boot loop, it's probably from a bad power supply. So we're on our Raspbian desktop, and so I've already done the sign-in information. So, so once you've done all the sign-in information, then you want to log into a terminal. So click the terminal one, which is this gray one right there. What we need to do is enable SSH. So the easiest way to enable SSH is uh, use the systemctl command. 
So next we're going to go to our Raspberry Pi and we're going to type in these two commands. And so first we need to open a terminal and that's the gray one there. And if you're like me, you won't be able to see this very easily because the type is so small. But uh, we're going to type in the first one, which is sudo systemctl enable ssh. Then hit enter. Now we're going to type in the next one, sudo systemctl start ssh. Hit enter and now we're able to SSH into our computer. So now we're going to go back to that wiki page that we uh, opened up before. So next we're going to put in our IP address. Click open, type in pi, and then the password that you put in when you set up your pi. And now all we're going to do is copy these commands one by one. Paste them into PuTTY, clone the GitHub, change the permissions of the program, change the directory, change to the directory, and then finally enable it. And this will cause our Raspberry Pi to reboot after it downloads that. And there you can see it started to reboot. Let's go to, so if we look at our Pi, it's starting to reboot now. Okay, and so now our Pi is rebooted and if we touch the screen, here, let's use the this you can see better. So if we do that, you can see the touch screen works. It's not the greatest touch screen in the world and I'll just show you up here. If your hand is near it, it tends to cause problems. So there you can see we got that open. And so now I'll show you what I'm gonna use this for. So I'm going to use this as a live subscriber count for my channel. So this is not the uh, best panel you can get out there, but it is one of the cheapest with the stand already included. And I think it's actually a, ends up being a great uh, monitor if you're trying to monitor uh, different statistics rather than trying to use it as a desktop. Uh, if you try to use it as a desktop, things are tiny, so it will definitely not work at that. So it has its place, so it's not a complete piece of crap like I thought at first. And if you're interested in this, look in the description below. I'll leave a link to this uh, particular screen. And stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.